I think it's le first step, leverage what you have. Like explore what you have in terms of the people, the talent, the technology, the data that you're sitting on. Um, I know for at least uh, some of the municipalities that I've, uh, I mean obviously Vancouver and other ones that I've come across, we're sitting on mountains of information that we're not necessarily tapping into uh, in first order. We're looking for the next wave of data, but we haven't really maximized the value out of what we already have. You know, I think bet, best idea is the availability of the information to the entrepreneurs within the cities, enabling this mindset of an entrepreneurship uh, to leverage that data and extract that information uh, for the well-being of that smart community itself, basically. I think, I think the, the idea around, and this is a little vague, but um, the idea of how these, type, these leaders can, can really share ideas and collaborate easier um, and not treat everything as a, a one-off solution. And, you know, this is very just unique to my city or this is a problem that we have. But I think I would, if I were to get CIOs and, and tech leaders together, it would you know, do more of these types of events find some sort of you know, platform that, that you can collaborate um, you know, across, across, the, across the globe, frankly. So, so I would say, um, again, not pointing to a specific technology or a solution, but I would say just in general, how we can share ideas, share resources, um, um, and collaborate easier. I suppose that you're there to promote innovation because technically, like, you know, Try not to become an obstacle in, in this process. Try to facilitate um, the creation of, of, of new ideas and new solutions. Um, so just maybe stay enthusiastic. Don't get, <laughs> don't get run down and burnt out by the whole process and possibly the politics around it. And just keep on, keep on trying and, and bringing New innovative solutions in usually brings in new innovative uh, people into an organization and then re-enthuses the people that you're working with. And I think that can be a, a really virtual cycle of, of, um, of, of actually coming up with, with, with the goods in the end. The one thing I think is that we all face similar challenges. Um, people think about cities as being heterogeneous. Everyone's different. But we have homogenous problems. Public safety transportation and mobility issues, now climate change. The one thing I would say is find what other cities are doing well and try to replicate it or iterate upon that. Um, whether it's you know, a, a city that's trying autonomous vehicles, hey, autonomous may not be for you, but that last mile of transit problem can be solved other ways. In San Diego, we have this thing called the free ride everywhere downtown or Fred. It's a simple electric vehicle that we use parking meter revenue to fund and it helps people with that last mile of transit. Um, these are like ubiquitous issues that anybody can deal with, um, that cities need to deal with, and trying to reinvent the wheel isn't gonna get you very far. Figure out what other people have done, replicate it, innovate it, and deploy it in your city. Well, that's a very good question. Um, the traditional models of city planning have changed. Um, it's not about just looking at the physical aspects or the physical infrastructure anymore. We have to make sure that we're also focusing on the technology component of it so that we're maximizing on that initial investment. So as a result, the role of the CIO or the Smart Cities Leads has become more central. They essentially are the glue uh, that was tying in a lot of the different uh, initiatives and efforts across the city. So it's really important uh, that um, we help uh, and we empower um, Smart Cities leads and uh, chief information officers or chief technologies officers in that specific role because that is really one of, that is really important should we, should a city um, want to be successful. So one thing that come to mind that it goes back to the data management aspect of it. I mean, one of the things we're seeing is uh, I believe that they should really closely pay attention to is start building IoT platforms, centralized IT platform, IoT platforms that is an enterprise level where because we're seeing more and more individual projects being managed with different vendors. They may be doing a lighting project, they may be doing a transportation or a building project. Those will be all different companies that have different ways of collecting the data and managing the data, but they need to start thinking uh, how 
how you actually uh, put an enterprise approach to collecting the data and be able to actually integrate it with city systems. You don't want to have 10 different vendors collecting their data different ways and then integrating with city systems 10 different ways. That's going to become very costly and very expensive. So we're recommending that they put an enterprise IoT approach where they have a layer where the data gets collected, but then the way it, integra it interacts with city systems, it's standardized. So we're believing that that's going to be something that is very important for them to look at. That it takes, it's a regional effort uh, doing smart city programs. Uh, you need to work together in cooperative manners. Uh, to me, you need to reach out to your school districts, your anchor institutions, uh, your residents themselves, uh, business community members, uh, healthcare industries, and work together. Um, you know, it's an expensive technology and broadband smart city infrastructure is very expensive and uh, you want to make sure you're hitting the target right and you want to make sure that you're, you're using resources of other agencies or working together. Uh, to me, what we should know is to have a way to test things and maybe not in a perfect environment and be able to uh, have a, a separate almost like a research lab or a development lab that you can go out and have a contained environment so you can try new things in a in a very contained setting so that when we're trying things out that we don't want to put on our network uh, so we have something that's very easily uh, you know we can test new things and try it out and then once we get that and figure out that does it really work then we can put it back into a broader application. Uh, I think it's about focusing on the value, um, not having these gee whiz solutions that are, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, may have a future value, but, uh, and are certainly cool to, to talk about and market, um, but uh, you need to, to lead with the need and find, uh, you know, a, a purpose uh, and a value to uh, the technology that's being deployed or else, you know, technology for technology's sake is, is not very valuable. Um, so it, it, you got to have a, a need. I think the, the main goal that I see cities having interest in is around the creation of a city operating system. That, that's ultimately what people want, even though they may not use that specific term. I think it's a, um, a long-term goal. To, to achieve it will take quite some time. And so what I always encourage people to do is look at ways that you can have short-term benefits from things like just integrating existing systems with you know, a BI, uh, a business intelligence model, using a dashboard of some sort uh, as, an, as a short-term integration model as opposed to just leaving the system sitting out on their own. I think a lot of people think they have to modernize everything in order to be ultimately smart. But using a, an integrated BI and analytics space tends to give you a lot of visibility that you didn't in the past while you go through the process of modernizing those systems. Uh, I, I think uh, really uh, alignment uh, is, is key, critical, aligning um, multiple departments and, and agencies and, and really that communication and alignment uh, starting out uh, initiatives is critical for success. If, if they're being done in silos, uh, we'll have people doing things, an example, smart city initiatives. If you have a, a program to uh, put electric cars in your fleet, um, that's great. You're reducing your carbon emissions uh, until the sustainability side calls and says, hey, your energy costs have quadrupled. What's going on over there, right? So it's really aligning those things. Maybe solar would, would solve that problem, but making sure that, that uh, the strategy is aligned. So I think the one sort of concept that I think they should know is know what problem you're trying to solve. Um, a lot of times technology is put in place without any particular problem to solve. And make sure that that problem that you're solving, you're able to connect that back to your resident um, and make sure that it's enhancing their life. So that would be my advice. I think there's a lot of really cool gadgets that are out there now. Um, but if they're not really trying to solve a problem for your, the residents in your community, then it's just another gadget. I would say that every idea for them to know is that utilizing the ecosystem of private sector universities and a bigger broad lens, the city can't solve it all themselves. So essentially, what is the right partnership to bring to the right problem to identify the right solution? 
and it doesn't just have to be held internally in the city. So really getting connected with your larger audience, understanding the research facilities, understanding some of the skill sets of what you're looking for in terms of cloud architects, data scientists, the ability to bridge it together. And the CIO CTO now in terms of that piece, it's a broader role you're now really looking at it from a general management standpoint and how do you break down the silos. You should be the facilitators in the city of bringing the conversation so that the silos are broken down and you can facilitate more dialogue to lead to a common solution. So I think the CIO, CTO are in a prime position because the CIO, CTO see end-to-end -end processes. They see end-to-end -end problems and they can help being the facilitators and also lead the evangelism of a broader connected conversation which will lead to tangible actions to solve those issues. The um, open data policy um, pr provide whatever uh, the regulation allows them to, to, to open, to share the, uh, the data for any organization or uh, uh, school, academic, academic, academia um, uh, related uh, investigation can uh, take the data and use it in a, in a way that uh, they can provide uh, new strategies, uh, help, help the government uh, understand the problems and provide uh, strategies for uh, solutions. I think every city should have uh, a, a focus on access to, techno to broadband, right? Fundamental, every city needs to make sure that that happens. Second is, as we start bringing everybody to that environment, as we make sure that everyone has access to the digital world, we need to also th be extremely thoughtful about um, making sure that that environment is safe and healthy. So this notion of digital human rights, if you will, right? That we're seeing it play out right now very publicly with the whole Facebook kind of data um, controversy. Uh, the reality is those exposures exist in many, many places beyond Facebook. Uh, Facebook is becoming the, or Mark Zuckerberg is becoming the symbol of the issue, but we also need to be very careful to not think that's the only place that that issue exists. So I, I think the important thing to understand in smart cities um, is that we're learning. If we look at what the, the mobile phone has done in the last eight years, you know, there's a time where we were just happy to be able to make a phone call and we could make a phone call and we weren't tied to some cord. And now that mobile device has transformed how we live our lives from the Waze application on how we drive, to how we order our food, to how we access information. You know, um, that piece of you're sitting around, somebody has a question, it's uh, not, oh, we have to go pull out a book or we have to do that. We either ask our mobile device or we type in a question and, and we get those answers. So I think the interesting part in this is that we're gonna continue to be learning and it's going to take us learning together. And uh, somebody mentioned being comfortable with the uncomfortable. We don't know what the outcomes are going to be. We don't know what the answers are going to be. Um, we just know that they're going to continue to change. And so I think that piece of learning and knowing that you're never fully going to arrive um, is, a, is something that we need to get comfortable with. And um, you know, maybe relax and just say, okay, uh, this is where we are today. We're not really quite sure. And be open-minded about it. You've got to put a lot of effort and you've got to bring organizations along so that they feel comfortable about uh, the change. You're basically talking about change management and don't fear change. If I could say one thing, one important thing, don't fear change. It's not about technology. It's about people. So the really important thing for the, the technology people is that they should break out of their traditional ways of thinking that it's all about technology. Technology is an enabler, and it should be, it should be thought of that way and implemented that way, that it, it's there to help people. And the real goal 
is to make life better for the folks who live there. And if they keep that in their mind as they're implementing things, they're going to get better systems that better serve the folks who live there. Uh, we talk about this. We talk, we've talked about this at, at, at the summit here. Um, one of the things they call it shiny things or filtering, right? So you get a lot of vendors that come in and they want to show you their, their wares, right? And I think that it's, it's very important that, um, that the, the problem that you are trying to solve is defined first before, you know, because I can bring you a big bag of tech, but what problem are we solving? So let's clearly define what the issue is, and then we can start looking at what type of technological solutions we can, we can bring to that. That there has to be a balance between how we use the technology to impact you or me and how it's being used to impact the, uh, the, the system, so to speak. So for example, uh, I can use the technology to make your, your ride to work safer and, and faster, but I might impact and, and ruin the system. Because all of us trying to be faster and safer may make the entire system less effective, less safe, and higher energy uh, producing or consuming. So they need to balance, when they look at this, they need to balance what are we trying to optimize for? The individual resident, uh, the system of residents, that kind of thing. Uh, I think it comes down to uh, standardization. Uh, there are so many smart city products out on the market today. Um, and really, if you can standardize on the platform, uh, standardize on the data management, uh, and standardize on how it's going to interface with the other platforms you're using. Uh, uh, oftentimes, we have so many smart city solutions that you get lost in the site of, you know, what is the easiest way to accomplish the goals we're trying to do? And I think standardization would be is key to that. Every city should be able to work with residents on a day-to-day -day basis to identify the issues and the needs. So within CIOs, within CTOs, for years, these were not necessarily positions that would talk to residents. These were often only servicing uh, other departments throughout their own cities. But now that position has really changed fundamentally. And now there's this real need for CIOs, CTOs, CDOs, smart city leads to talk to residents, understand what their, their needs are, and then go back to the technology teams and make sure and mapping those uh, technological solutions to those use cases. Being a smart city doesn't always mean implementing technology. I think kind of where things get lost sometimes is everybody does think of technology when you think smart city, but sometimes it's about internal process improvement and things of that nature. So I believe in addition to the technology you can help implement, it's also about streamlining the processes that um, provide the services to the end user, and that may not involve technology at all.